So last night while playing some video games, my computer decided to shut itself off. It turned itself off and turned itself back on immediately. However, afterwards there was a burning smell, right? The cause of that is faulty power supply. In this case, the power supply actually is still working, but we know that for sure something has gone wrong with the power supply because of the burning smell and of course the computer shut itself off. So I kind of took it off, uh, disconnected everything and now I'm getting ready to actually do some investigation. I'm going to take this power supply out and I'm going to have a look inside to see if we can actually find the root cause of it. I expect a capacitor blown out and of course we can't just you know keep using this computer because of the issues that may happen with a faulty power supply computer yes does work and that everything appears to be okay however with a bad power supply meaning you know if it has a blown capacitor or whatnot we may be getting wrong voltage wattage on any of these other components which can cause issues in the long run after i take this power supply out i will open this up as well and see if we can find that blown capacitor within it or you know it may not be a capacitor but eventually I will be replacing this power supply with a name brand this one is actually a cheap power supply it's rated at 650 watts we should have been more than capable of handling this type of system and I will list the specs for this computer right now So right now what I'm going to do is just disconnect some of these basic components. All I did for now is just disconnect the hard drive and the fans that are kind of routed in the back here because it was a bit easier to film. So those are the only things that I've already disconnected, so just a hard drive and a couple of fans. Uh, right now I'm just going to disconnect my video card here and I have, as I specified earlier, I have R9 uh, 390 ATI video card or AMD I should say and the uh, video card is now disconnected now I'm just gonna take the motherboard out and of course if you're doing this make sure you don't have any static built up in you and uh, you know make sure you kind of uh, discharge any electricity that you may have there and from here on it's just fairly straightforward so now I have the all of the a voltage or a power supply components disconnected now I'm just gonna turn it around and you know unscrew this uh, faulty power supply and then we're gonna have a look what's inside And here's our power supply. We're going to have a look inside and see what's going on. It's a really cheap, it's called Solid Gear. It was only 30 bucks, but it's supposed to be 650 watts. I kind of doubt that, but I kind of took a chance on it. Next one is going to be a name brand. Okay, now let's have a look inside. We have one, two, three screws, looks like it. And these four should only be holding the fan but I'm gonna try these three first one two three and then see if we can get that out see if we can get open sometimes these are pretty much meant not to be messed with not to be repaired or whatever since this was only thirty dollars when I bought it I actually found the receipt I bought it in March of 2016 so for a cheap supply power supply it lasted kind of okay. Yeah, this screwdriver is not the best. But it's happening. So, I wasn't like terribly mad that it went bad. When I use one of those online calculator calculators for the power supply rating, um, it said that my computer really needed only about a 500 watts this is 650 and uh, it went bad it went bad so 
but that goes to show if you buy something cheap it will uh, serve just as well you know you can't really expect it I mean I'm sure there have been cases of oh man I'm really trying to put some muscle in into this one I'm sure there have been cases of name brand hundred dollar so power supplies going bad as well but uh, they do come with warranty and this one uh, maybe it did at some point but it's been over years so I kinda doubt that there's any warranty right now okay so looks like this is going to move but I may have to actually bend it a little bit in order for actually to open all the way let me see you see how it's kind of it's actually kind of stuck right there so but uh, I'm gonna bend it just a little bit I don't want it to go too crazy on it well it looks like it will go this way so that's good alright let's see if we can find that blown stinky capacitor or whatever it is that went bad I just gotta be careful here not to get shocked Well, here it is actually. This big one. This big one actually here, you see how it leaked a little bit here? So visually I can't really find a blown capacitor per se. Uh, the only thing that kind of looks like it might be it. I mean, usually they just bulge out, but this thing has a little thing there. So maybe, maybe that kind of looked like it leaked out right there. But uh, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure because I'm not a electrical engineer or anything like that. However, we can test the voltage each one of these um, cables and then see how it goes from there. See if we can uh, find one that's not given proper voltage. Either way, this thing is going to get the, going to get replaced. For this test, we're going to use a multimeter. We're going to set it to DC 20. Our 24 pin motherboard connector we're going to test last. First, we're going to test just these regular 12 volt connectors. As you can see, I have a little jump jumped my uh, pins here and now the power supply is turned on as you can see it's spinning over there and now we're gonna get to testing our connectors now needless to say every time you deal with electricity it can be dangerous so if you decide to do this you're doing this at your own risk and uh, basically I'm not responsible if you kill yourself or hurt yourself so here how here's how this works right the uh, the red one is supposed to be 5 volts, the yellow is supposed to be... Oh, okay, so the, yellow, the red one should be 5 volts and the yellow one should be 12. So let's see what happens here. We're going to connect the red and we're going to collect the ground and it says 5 volts so that's good to go. Now let's go to yellow here, go to 5 volts, oh, I should say ground and that one reads 12 volts so we're good there uh, moving on this is just this one is part of it so I don't, I don't have to test that okay here's the same type of deal here we have a yellow and and uh, and black so this should be 12 volts we'll just go for these two here this black one and this yellow one Okay, so that one gives gives us 12.4. We're good on that one. Let's move on. All right. So here we go again. Red and black should give us five. And as you can see, this is five. We're good there. And again, yellow. 
I don't do this often, guys, so it's like a little bit awkward. It's like almost trying to learn with the chopsticks. We got 12 volts here, so we're good to go. Good to go there. And here's our serial connector type of thing. We're gonna do this one from a this away. Let's just do this. Just need one ground here. And we're gonna poke a poke this one. Poke at this one. So it's a 12 volts for the yellow. And let's try the red. And we got five for the red. So we're okay there. Here's another one. Gonna do it the same way. Let's shove the ground in here. So we got the black one there. Let's try the yellow. 12 volts. We're good. And we got five here. We're good there. Okay. And the last one is this 8 pin motherboard one. And the same type of deal. This one should be just flat out 12. So I'm just going to pick any of them. And there you go. This one says 12 as well. So that appears to be okay. Let me try these other ones, other pins, 12, since this one goes to the motherboard, I'm going to test all of them, 12, and 12, okay, of course this is testing while it's not under load, so the number readings might be slightly different when it's under load, so, but we're going to move on to this one here now. Okay, so for this big 24 pin one, the main difference is is that these orange ones are supposed to be 3.3 volts. The red one, just like um, on the other parts, is 5, and the yellow one is 12, while the uh, purple one here is supposed to be 5 as well, just like the red one. So that's the main difference we have to look at. And lastly, white is supposed to be negative 5. So let's get to it. Uh, I'm going to try these orange ones first. I'm just going to pick a random ground here. I'm going to stab it here. And then just go from there. Okay, there we go, 3.4 on that, so it's a little bit higher than what it's supposed to be, 3.4 on that, these are the orange ones, keep in mind. And here's this brown one, that one is not supposed to be anything, I guess, brown, hmm, on my chart, brown is not even listed, so I'm not even sure what that one's supposed to be, maybe some kind of signal wire. Here's red, 5 volts, here's the, the, that's just another ground, here's another red, which is supposed to be 5 volts, and here's this purple one, it's supposed to be 5 volts, that one is actually a little bit stronger than what it's supposed to be, it's 5.17, so I don't know what the tolerances are on these, maybe that's okay, maybe not. But either way, I know this power supply is bad because of, you know, when it when it uh, crashed the computer, it, there was an awful smell. Anyways, let's try our yellows here. It's supposed to be 12. That's pretty normal. Another 12 here, another yellow. And here's a orange over here, 3.45. So I'm not sure what these tolerances are supposed to be. These are actually a little bit higher again. So uh, let's flip it over, I guess. And but mostly we have on this other side our reds, some reds and blue. Blue is supposed to be negative 12. Let's try that one. I'm going to ground it again. 
Try not to touch this signal wire, this jump thing that I made here. Um, I'm pretty sure the voltage is pretty low, but uh, I don't want to risk it. So let's try our blue, which is the second one here. And uh, it's actually low. It's 11.35. So that's not good. Again, I don't know what the tolerances are supposed to be, but to me, 11.35 um, is not even close to 12. You can't round it up. You can't, you know. So, see, 11.35. So that could be one indicator of a bad power supply. Again, I'm not an electrical engineer. I just know some very basic stuff. And it's very fun to do. Let's try our white here. White is right next to this one. It's supposed to be... Yeah, a bit awkward here. And this white one is not giving us anything. Well, actually the white one is underneath. Underneath, that's just an empty one. There we go. White one is actually giving us five. Which is not good. The white is supposed to be negative five volts. Now let me flip these around. Okay, bear with me here. Eh. I'm really, because as, as a kid I got shocked many times. So I'm kind of like trying not to... <laughs> okay, okay, come on. Don't be a wuss, right? Alright. Yep, so... It's given us positive. No, wait. It's actually negative. So it was negative. Let me see here. So we're good there. Maybe I actually missed that negative part of it. Let me go back. Yeah. No? It was showing positive 5 before, so uh, maybe that's okay. But it's just odd that that specific wire likes to switch the voltage okay well we did some testing guys and I you know I'm gonna be replacing this anyway so but as you can as you as you saw in some of these there were some fluctuations in uh, in some of these connectors especially the yellow one I believe and the orange one was kinda off as well so that's not good and this is testing while it's not under load. So this is one way to test your power supply. You know, th this is actually a very fun thing to do. It's not something you have to do, but um, it's certainly fun. And you can know for sure whether your power supply is bad or not. But uh, either way, if you suspect your power supply is bad, you should replace it regardless because you don't want your other components in computer to break simply because you did not get adequate voltage or even wattage to your components of the computer. You know what I mean? So, as you saw in this case, it it's not actually up to spec as far as I'm concerned. And I already know it's something went bad with it, so. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you find this video educational. I found it educational because I was learning some stuff as well. So there is that. Thank you so much guys. Consider subscribing. Have a good one. Bye-bye.